So what, what are the, what's the vehicle that we're in at the moment? This is our YT variant terminal tractor. Uh, we've manufactured this variant since 2019 and it's diesel format when we released it to the global market. We currently manufacture this one in the Netherlands. Uh, we have a similar vehicle uh, being produced in Malaysia and I'm delighted to say that from 2023 we'll also be manufacturing in North America in a new facility we're about to build there. So Turberg are a global brand then? Terberg are certainly a global brand. Many people will recognise us uh, from our ports and terminal business, um, where we are one of the world's leaders in terminal tractors for container ports. We also have a very strong presence in the logistics sector worldwide. In the United Kingdom, we're very fortunate. Over 85% uh, of consumer goods in the United Kingdom at some point are touched by Terberg product. We have to listen to the voice of the customer and mm. we're, we're, we're very proud of that interaction that we have with our customer base mm. and uh, we're, we're developing things ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where we're going on today in our journey with alternative fuels and you know in the future automation, teleoperation. So mm. it's about the voice of the customer yeah. more so than anything else. Which is brilliant. So. Let's go and have a look at the uh, at what the voice of the customer yeah. has led you to do. Yeah, be delighted. So here we go, Paul. This is our YT203 EV. Wow. This, um, this as you see, looks like the diesel. Yeah. Um, although it's lovely and green. <laughs> um, the concept from Terberg was to develop a platform that was a global platform, diesel, yeah. electric, and in the future hydrogen. Right. So that was one of our USPs. We yeah. didn't set out to develop a solely electric or solely diesel because different markets demand different products. Yeah. And we're on a journey. Yeah. And that journey is relatively early and will evolve into something else. Yeah. In the logistics market, we're actually exceeding what we did before. In the port business, okay. we're actually equaling what we did before. Wow. So and that's a USP again for yeah. us because our competitors in some ways are developing trucks against milk floats right. and we're developing a truck in a truck. So our yeah. drivers can drive out, uh, step out of their diesel into their electric and just experience the benefits of the electric world while still being able to do their job as efficiently as they have done historically. Yeah. We, we've got some of the Kempower kit yeah. either side of the vehicle and yeah. obviously you need um, electric charging. Yeah, yeah. How, how did the relationship with Vital and Kempower kick off? Well, historically we've delivered trucks to customers and we've never delivered fuel stations. And, and what we recognised very, very quickly that without us being able to deliver a fueling source, we couldn't deploy our vehicles. We had vehicles, we had no charging, we had no infrastructure. So we were um, encouraged very quickly to get involved in a sector that we had no experience in. Eventually we came to Kempower, and I'll say eventually because we went through quite a few wow. before we got to, to Kempower, and Kempower um, introduced us to Vital EV in the UK and that was a that was a turnkey moment for us. Brilliant. Because we were able to in a lot of ways sit back and relax because we had eventually found a partner that could work with us to deploy our equipment. So Alistair, you have a really unique customer base and, and, and a unique operation style, which really suits the Kempower equipment yeah. really well. Tell me a little bit about that. So we're dealing with a customer that traditionally is looking at miles per gallon and you know per hundred kilometers and whatever. Yeah. Um, we're not in that space. We're doing very low mileage, mm. but we're doing very high hours. Splash and dash is the diesel thing electric we need to be able to do that we need to be able to get the power into the vehicle quickly mm. one of the challenges that we have is our idle time between moving containers and waiting for the next load the driver sat there waiting for his next message from mm. his rdt terminal so we, we need to be able to keep the vehicle running diesel he sits there with his engine running and in the uk in the logistics sector that can be anywhere between 60 and 75 percent of the engine on time Goodness is idle me. Yeah. And therefore, by definition, we're consuming fuel um, and that becomes a big scary number for the customer. So by introducing the EV vehicle with the right size batteries, 
and the right Kemper Vital EV charger, we're able to overcome those. So we have not found a job in the UK so far that we've had to contemplate battery swap or anything like that. We're trying to put the right charger in on day one. Yeah. It's got redundancy if we have a power module failure, mm. so we're still delivering power yeah. until Vital can get out and fix the problem, if yeah. there is one. Mm. But more importantly, we can scale out to the satellite S-series yeah. and gives us, importantly, the dynamic charging. Mm. And that's key to us because our vehicles will come off and online at various times of the hour and day, mm. demanding various different loads and everything else. Alistair, it's been really interesting, insightful and exciting to talk about the journey that Turberg are on and that you're helping your customers on. Mm. Thank you so much for your time today. Paul, you're welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. They must be crazy. They're letting me drive this thing out of here. But before we go, what an amazing journey Turberg are on with Vital EV and the Kempower equipment to decarbonize their whole industry, saving tons of CO2. What a fantastic journey.